Okay, so a lot of people have been asking for capsicumels again, and I have to admit, I kind of have a soft spot for caps capsicumels. We did a jalapeno one several years ago that, while it was great, it stalled a little. And that always kind of bugs me when that's the way the video ended, is we left it at a stall. I just don't like that. And then we did a mango habanero yep. that it was okay. It wasn't my favorite. I just wanted to revisit something that I knew I would like and make it the way I want to like it, okay? So. And then when Brian was saying, we need to make another cask mill, I said, pineapple. And he said, okay. And then she said, habanero. And I said, okay. I like jalapenos better, but there is something to be said for the habanero in the way it comes across for flavor rather than a jalapeno. Plus jalapeno pineapple isn't nearly as, it doesn't roll off the tongue quite as nice as habanero pineapple or pineapple habanero. So that's what we're going with. I have here two rather large habaneros um, that I chopped up and we have 3.5 pounds of Draper's honey. Now this is- um, Nebraska honey. It's Nebraska honey. We believe it's just a wildflower. It's not any specific uh, flower type. So it's a wildflower honey. This is going to be so strongly flavored that I would imagine almost any semi-neutral style of honey would work really, really well for it. But this honey is crystallized. <laughs> it looks like applesauce, okay? It's seriously, it was a pain getting it in there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add our water pretty much now. So we're gonna put in quite a bit of water, start mixing this up. The so water is warm. The, yes, that's what I was gonna say. And we have 96 ounces of water because three pounds of honey is about a quart. So right about there should do. Um, we end up with roughly a gallon after racking, we'll have like a full gallon. So now I just need a spoon. Doesn't have to be a spoon, it could be one of these. Any device of mixation is appropriate for the job. And I just want to literally reliquify the honey. We get asked a lot, um, you know, what happens if your honey crystallizes? Well, it just makes it harder to get out of the jar, yeah, really. It's um, just annoying. Okay. Yeah. The weight is still, still the weight. I still go with 3.5 pounds. Um, though I do believe that there's probably a little bit more concentration sugars. I, I don't have facts on that. If anybody actually knows, let me know. Um, but we've used it and it, we haven't seen any, yeah. any problems from it. Once you mix it into water, you just have to mix it a little bit better. It's liquid and it dissolves just like anything else. Or you can heat it up first if you really want to. Just That's make sure way. that you don't heat it too much because yeah. you don't want to... Uh, alter the compounds in the honey. Yeah, you don't want to make it a boche without intentionally making it a boche. Is it warm? I, I, yeah, it was warm. <laughs> but when we say warm, the water was probably just a little bit over body temperature. It's like 100, 105 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Not hot by any means, so not enough to scorch anything or hurt the honey or take out any subtleties or anything like that. Just enough to make it easier to mix because otherwise this would be a major pain to do. I'm not even being careful. Notice the foam because you want to get some aeration in there for the beginning of the fermentation process. Make a mess if you want to. Just try not to splash your neighbor. And if your neighbor is literally in the next house, definitely don't splash your neighbor. You want more water? Yeah, I think we could put more water in there now. Can we just put it all in there? Just put it all in. All right. Go for broke. So I want to mix that in too, but I think it's actually pretty well mixed already. See, even crystallized honey, it worked flawlessly. Didn't, didn't have any real issue. Maybe a little bit in the bottom still. We started with 3.5 pounds this time. A lot of time we shoot for that 1.100 starting gravity. There's a good reason for that. It's an easy number to remember. It's an easy target to shoot for. It usually makes around 13% alcohol, which is kind of the sweet spot for mead. Get it? Sweet spot, mead. Anyway, and it doesn't stress the yeast. Any yeast, even an 18% yeast can still make 13% alcohol too, and it'll do it easily. So we're gonna be using 71B on this, which we know can go 15% or more at times, because again, yeast can't read. So in this particular brew, I wanted something that had a little bit more alcohol, but I didn't wanna go too crazy because we are going to be reverse fortifying this later on. I'll get into that once this part A is done. Um, you'll understand, it'll make sense, trust me. Okay, this is mixed. So at this point, I wanna add my habanero, which, I rinsed it off in star sand. I didn't really like scrub it or anything like that. I mean, it, they're clean and I rinsed them in star sand. So, you know, they're, they're, they're clean, they're good. 
I did slice them up. I didn't chop them up into little bits because I want to be able to get them back out. Um, and I'm just going to leave that in there. And then to that, I'm adding three grams. Normally I use two and a half grams of fermato when I'm doing a, you know, a, a typical mead. This one, I just feel like with a little bit of extra honey, three grams probably isn't going to hurt. So three grams. I'll be honest. It came out to three grams when I put it on the scale because, you know, when I scraped it out, that's what it came to. So I went with it. If you're not comfortable using Fermato or any nutrient, you can probably get away with it in this exact mead because for some reason, I don't know what it is, yeast love capsaicin. I don't know why, but they seem to really love it. They are, they have the hot tooth. They, they want hot stuff. I don't think it's the capsaicin itself. I think it's the nitrogen available in the peppers, but Science is a thing and we don't have the facts. Regular peppers versus hot peppers. Hot peppers start up faster and ferment more vigorously. All right. It's been done. People have done. tested it. Not us, although we have actually fermented regular bell peppers once. It was it was not good. It was very vegetal. And to this, oh, you know, before we do that, let's take a reading. Let's take a reading. And my hands are sticky. I have to go wash. By the way, before we started anything, the very first step was we sanitized everything in. <laughs> See, I know somebody out there was going, are they going to do it? Are they going to do it? Yeah, we're going to do it. And what that really is, is literally a red bucket over on the side holds about five gallons of water and we mix it, mix star sand according to the manufacturer's directions in solution to fill it and things stay in there until we're ready to use them. All this stuff. That's why everything's like wet. It's not like we have some kind of a sheen on there. It's, it, it's wet. Pretty much what I was hoping for, 1.122. What that means is, if this ferments out dry, it's gonna go through 122 points, which should give us, let me get out the calculator teacher said I would never have. If this went just to 1.000, we would have 16.47% ABV. Now, I really don't know that Lalvin 71B can go quite that high, and that's okay. But we're not gonna tell it it can't. Right, because it's gone to 17.55 for us before, so, I'm hoping, but anywhere above that 13, 14% mark, I am totally fine with that because we want this to end up a little bit sweet too. And we'll probably end up adding more sweetener to taste and then we'll pasteurize it to finish it all off. But there's another step, like I said, where that's gonna change. So that 16.47 is not gonna end at 16.47. Trust me, it'll all make sense. Because this was sanitized, I can do this. Some people dump that out to me. That was 200 milliliters of brew that has not reached its final destination yet, which would be my glass. Is this 100 milliliters? That one is bigger. That's, I think it's 150. Oh, okay. It just sounded good for me to be able to be confident in the number. I'm you know? sorry, I'm sorry. I learned it. It's okay. <laughs> and like I said, we're gonna be using 71B for this. Why? Well, because I bought 10 packets of it. We like it. It works really, really well. And it's really great for fruity flavors and things like that. And it has low nutrient requirements. Since we're not going with a super staggered schedule or anything like that, and I just basically put in a little bit extra Fermate O, and this is a little bit higher gravity, I wanted something that can work with that a little bit better. So in it goes. And what do you do? Back your pocket. Why? Because there's always like one little yeasty that gets in there and will not fulfill his destiny if he doesn't get in the bread. We need those yeasts. That's right. You need to get in there and do that. They got job. a job to do. All right. And now, what are we going to do? We're going to put the lid on it. That's right. Now I know you're thinking, but you said this was a pineapple habanero. That's part two, which is still in this video. It's just not quite. You just got to yeah. keep watching. Just keep watching. For us, it's gonna be a couple weeks. For you, it's probably gonna be like, oh, I don't know, two seconds. Okay, two weeks have passed. It's time to check on this guy. See how we're gonna do. We already loosened it. Now, the reason why we're checking is because our airlock is not showing any more activity. If I look at this, I can still see some bubbles coming up the side. That could be degassing. So we're gonna check it to find out. First check is never definitive. No matter what the number is, we always do two. But before we do that, olfactory and optical assessment. Optical looks beautiful. It smells like habanero mead. It really smells good to me. I'm gonna go a little bit in because I don't want the uh, chili bits. 
it is not clearing yet, so it may not actually be done yet. Which is fine because we have a lot more going on in this. Oh yeah. Obviously. Brews tend to like capsaicin, so it could very well have gone all the way, but it did not. It actually stalled. What is going on here? Or it's just not done yet. It's only been two weeks. It went from 1.122 down to what looks to be 1.038. Now, I would call that a stall. It may not actually be a stall. So instead, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna pour the sample back in, we're gonna put it back on the shelf, I'll give it just a good stir, and let it go. It probably just means it's not done yet. We saw bubbles, it's just not done. See, not all of our brews finish in two weeks, <laughs> like I want them to. <laughs> but people talk about mead taking years to ferment. That's not entirely accurate. It really doesn't take years to ferment. It could take years to age, but the actual fermentation process is much, much, much shorter, usually only a few weeks. Um, there's some gas coming out of here. I can hear it. I'm careful to not squeeze that bulb. I don't want to put any oxygen in this, and I'm just trying to get everything going and degas it a little bit without disturbing it too, too much, like this, the lid, the, the top. I don't want to introduce oxygen. Yeah, I'm seeing some gas action happening there in the airlock. It's probably just from degassing now. And uh, we'll just let this go sit for a little while longer. If it is in fact stalled, we'll deal with that when the time comes. All right, so it's been a week since this thing was at 1.038 and probably wasn't done yet. On my visual and olfactory inspection, it smells like chilies. Um, but the first thing I wanna do is actually, we have sanitized a pair of tongs I want to remove the habaneros. I, I think they're just starting to be at that point where I don't really like leaving them in much longer. They've been in, in here for already three weeks. They've done what they're going to do. They're not going to give up anymore. And they floated. A lot of the time, jalapenos don't float. That's why I like to use jalapenos sometimes. But um, if they float, it's okay. Just remove them like I'm doing now. I'm trying not to disturb it too, too much when I'm doing it. But this saves us racking it yet because I don't know that it's really ready to be racked. But using sanitized tools, sticking them in there, least amount of risk. Okay. So. Time to take a reading. Yes. For that, hydrometer. People have been asking lately again about refractometers. I don't have any problem with refractometers. I personally like the hydrometer. I think it makes me feel like a mad scientist. I like the way they work. They're very simple. You can use them at any stage in fermentation and get accurate results. If you prefer a refractometer, more power to you. We actually have videos comparing them. There's nothing wrong with them. And that's the cool thing about brewing is there's a lot of ways to do the same thing. You know, Just because we do it one way doesn't mean that there aren't other ways and some of them are better, some of them aren't as good. It, it's just personal preference, really. Okay, I can tell already that this didn't move a lot more than last time. Yeah, it moved a bit. If I ha if I really had to put a number on it, I'd say 1.031. Let's see where that sits. I'm gonna call it 1.032. So it went down six more points in a week. See, I don't like that. Why are you being slow? But it did go down, so we're just gonna... Did we add yeast holes to this? Should we add yeast holes to this? Last time we didn't think it was done yet. Um, we could add yeast holes. Let's add yeast holes. Yeah. But first, let me pour this sample back in because everything was sanitized. And I'm not even going to be all that careful. I just don't want to oxygenate. I don't mind if it stirs it up because I'm going to stir everything up in a minute anyway. Now, the reason we add yeast hulls, okay? Yeast hulls are a pseudo-nutrient. Let's put it, that's a great way to say it because they're not a great nutrient on their own. But what they do is they give the yeast a little extra when they're struggling like this. If this is stalled or stalling, I mean, it's slow, they can speed it up a little bit, they can help. Temperature plays a large part as well. Our house has been 75 degrees pretty constantly for a while, so I don't think temperature is going to be the issue. When I say 75, I mean Fahrenheit. Celsius would be far too high. Actually, I don't even know what 75 Celsius is. Probably like 180 or something. <laughs> um, so we're going to add some yeast hulls to this, just like a teaspoon of yeast hulls. Mix it up real good. Be right back to show you. Okay, yeast hulls. 
Really simple. All they are is dead yeast. If you don't have them, can't get them, don't use Fermate O, okay? The nitrogen in there, what I've been told and what I've seen is it doesn't actually help at this stage. So adding more nitrogen to this isn't necessarily helpful. And because it did go down, we know where yeast is still viable. So that's why I don't want to just add more yeast because they're already stressed. Adding more yeast to a stress, adding more yeast to a stressed fermentation is just going to make more stressed fermentation. It just doesn't really help. So I'm going to add some yeast hulls and I'm going to do, uh, it's a healthy teaspoon here. And all they really are, like I say, they're dried yeast, okay? If you have access to bread yeast or any yeast they have laying around, maybe something that's expired or whatever, you can just bake it in your oven for at like 350 for like 20 minutes or so on a sheet. Just don't burn it. And it's now yeast hulls. You can alternately boil it in some water, but it's harder to measure the amount that you use at that point. So, you know, that kind of thing. But um, if you boil it, just use a little bit of water, boil it up for a couple minutes and it's dead, you know. Yeast aren't really that hardy of a creature. They're going to die pretty easily when you start adding heat. All right, so we need to add to our list. Take a note. Our notes. Yeast dolls. And then I want to mix these around a little bit. Do we have a spoon? We do. I will say, though, this smells really good. It smells just like a capsicum owl should smell. So I'm not worried about the... Um, chili still being in there, but they were getting to the point where they were starting to fall apart a little and they would have been harder to remove later. And I just didn't want to have any problems. So better safe than sorry. There is another thing that we know going forward at this point that is making us not stress about the slowness of- We're going to be doing stuff to it. We're going to be putting so much more stuff into here that it basically just doesn't matter. Yep. But even so- We want a good base to start with. Right. I'm just trying to break these yeast holes up. They clock together. And it's like when you put flour into gravy if you don't have it in a slurry first, you know. And I do want to give this a good strong mix without oxygenating if possible, but I want to get all the goop, that's the technical term for lees, on the bottom of this up into suspension again, because that's where a lot of your yeast really are. So if I can get them back up and say, hey, here's some stuff for you. Wake up, they, guys, they, wake up. They might also find the rest of the honey that's in there that they didn't get the first time around. He's also degassing, de which is going to help remove some of that waste product that is unwanted by us and unwanted by the yeast. So maybe they'll be a little bit more comfortable and be able to do their job. Yeah, everything that you can do to make the yeast more comfortable is a good thing. And their waste products are ethanol, which we don't want to get rid of the ethanol, and CO2, which I can do without the CO2. We don't we don't need this to be carbonated, especially not that way. Those gases don't really taste all that great. So I'm just going to stir this for a really long time, and then I'm going to put the lid back on. We're going to put it back on the shelf for another week, and then we'll be back with you then to tell you how it's doing. It's been seven days. That's one week, and we're going to take a look at it again. Yeah, that's right. We unscrewed it already. <laughs> it was on there tight. It smells like a capsicum. Oil. It smells beautiful already. But as we recall, this was at 1.032, which means it either wasn't done or it stalled. So we added some yeast hulls, gave it a good shake, and let's see how it's doing. Don't worry, I got a solution no matter what. We have so much that's gonna go on with this afterwards that... It just doesn't <laughs> matter. It is nice and clear though, so that's good. I don't think it fermented anymore, I can see. It dropped, no, I don't even think it dropped. The two points. 1.032. Has not moved at all. Okay. Now, is that bad? Technically speaking, yeah, that means it's stalled and it's stuck and it's just not going to ferment anymore. Do we actually care in this case? No. no. Let me explain why. <laughs> we are going to be backwards fortifying this and then forwards fortifying this. But you're, we're going to have to do one step at a time. So first, we're going to rack this to a pitcher so that we know how much we have. Let's do that first. All right, so you notice I have a sample sitting here. It's going into the pitcher. You, know, you want to know why I didn't pour it right into the fermenter? Because I've done that a couple times. And all it does is disturb all the leaves and makes it so that we can't continue on the same day. So not doing that today. Learn from my mistakes. Uh -oh. Make Let's sure put that, that on just a little like... bit more. <laughs> wow, that's... How did... I took it off and I thought I put it on there well, but apparently I did not. 
Okay. Well, you didn't have to admit that it was your fault. I was. That's gonna, right. I was just going to make it a mistake. And I call will it that. take responsibility. All right. So I'm going to rack this just like we always do. If you don't know how to rack, we do have videos on that. And do yourself a favor. Don't rack early. Wait until it's ready to be racked. In this case, we've done all we can do. We have steps that we can take to make sure that the fact that it's stalled doesn't even matter. So in most cases, you don't want to do that. But in this case, it's okay because of what's coming. And I know I'm being obtuse because I don't want to just tell you and then you click off and go watch some other video. I want you to keep watching our video. Spoilers. All right, so we racked it. We have exactly 128 ounces. Now, at this point... We got the mead. We got the habanero. Need some pineapple. I'm very hesitant to pour 32 ounces of pineapple into that pitcher. <laughs> so, guess what? We now know we have 128 ounces. Let me take a note on that, because that's very important for us to know at this point. Um, so draw a line, today's date. Yeah, 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 yeah. Five, nine, 23, one, 28 ounces. Okay, we're gonna rack this back into a fermenter. Okay, So racked again. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. But as we were racking this, we thought, hey. This smells good. Since we're doing so many crazy things to this, why don't we take a taste right now as our baseline taste? And see what it is, you know? Yeah. It, it's a capsicumel. I like capsicumels. This one is on the a little bit of a sweet side. It's got a little bit of a haze, but not too bad. It totally smells like a capsicumel. I mean, yeah. it smells so good. I don't have to put my nose in there and I can... Smell it. All right, first off, if you like capsicumels, stop here and just bottle this. Oh my God, that is good. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's hot though, it's got some spice, but it's got a little sweetness to it that makes it really, really nice. Now, just so you know, if we were to stop here and bottle this, we, we would pasteurize. pasteurize it. This is a ticking time bomb right now. It stalled, but that doesn't mean that something couldn't change to make it start back up again. Where she goes, nobody knows. Fat. First, I want to calculate something. I want to know how much alcohol we actually have in here. So I know when we start doing fortification and unfortification, what I have. So if we started with a 1.122, we ended at 1.032. That gives us 0 0.090 that we went through in gravity times 135 gives me 12.15. Which even though it's stalled, that's still a, a fairly decent ABV for a mead. Right. But we're going to be doing something now, and that's going to be adding some pineapple juice. Now, I don't know exactly how much we're going to add yet. We're going to start with a quart because we want a decent pineapple flavor. There's goop in here, but this is probably going to sit for a while before we bottle. So, yeah. hey, you know, I'm shaking it up because goop is goop is good, right? Um, I'm even thinking, let's pour half of this in first, rather than the whole thing. Now, yes. you're going to want to be very gentle in pouring, yep. because this has you alcohol can, You can in siphon it. this if you want to. It's just going to be very tricky with that small volume. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, we're going to, full disclosure, we're going to pour it, but we're going to do it very delicately. And by that, we're going to... And you to know what? I'm, I don't think half the bottle's going to do. I think we need to use the whole bottle. Yeah. Plus, it's easier to measure. So I'm going to tip it towards Brian, so that way he can do. You got to just commit. A gentle pour. You don't even really want to hear noise. Like that. You can go flat. Teamwork, baby. Teamwork. The trick is stay as close to it as you can. Try not to smack the glass off the side, because if you broke it now, that would be bad. And I just want to give this a gentle mix. I know some people are going crazy about oxidation right now. You know what? There's always an inherent risk. We're being as careful as we can. Um, it's virtually impossible to not have some amount of risk when you're trying to do some of this stuff. So just be as careful as you can. Okay, right off the bat, I think that's right. <laughs> I smell pineapple. I smell chili. This is this is already amazing. All right. If you feel like it's well mixed, let's take another taste. Yes. 
Because this is where you balance things. Does it need more sweetness? Does it need more pineapple? Does it need less pineapple? Does it need less bashing of the glass? It probably needs less bashing of the glass. I will say that. But that was from plastic. <laughs> you meant the oh, glass. Oh, did I? Like <laughs> okay, I definitely still smell the chili. Uh, the pineapple is not as prominent, but that could come through later too. You gotta remember, as these meld, it'll get different. Oh, wow. That is lovely. Oh, it smells lovely. Yep. Mm. The pineapple juice added a little bit more sweetness to this as well. So it took our uh, gravity up from that 1.032 probably to like 1040. Let's take a reading and find Yeah, we can out. do that. We can this do that. flavor profile, I feel like this is we, we spectacular. Got it. Right, yeah. It's got a good sweetness, but it's not overly sweet because, again, capsicumels, they always require more sweetness than you think. But you still have a nice pleasant... There's a good burn. Afterburn. It's afterburn. But the pineapple flavor is actually quite strong. Yeah. I, I'm a little surprised. I, did, I thought maybe a quart wasn't going to be enough. That's why we have two bottles here. It didn't raise it by much. 1.034. Oh, good. There's just not a lot of sugars in this. So let's see. Um, there's four servings in the container. Yeah, there's a hundred grams of sugar in the whole bottle. So it's like less than a quarter pound of sugar. Now mixed through, it really added barely anything. So we added 32 ounces of pineapple mm -hmm. juice. I'm gonna pour this back in carefully. All right, so we agree the flavor's good. Yes. Everything's good. Yes. So now what we want to do is we're gonna fortify this, okay? This is an alternative to pasteurizing. Right. We could just pasteurize it, but we know lots of people have shown serious reluctance. concerns and reluctance towards either purchasing an immersion heater or immersion circulator, sorry, to create the, the safer pasteurization method or... Just general fear or don't want to be bothered. Right. So fortification is an easy way, but there's another reason why we're fortifying this one. We just unfortified it. Think about it. We had 12.15%. And then we added 0% to it. We added 32 ounces of 0%. So we dropped the ABV, which that could lose some of the preservation qualities of it, things like that, longevity. So yeah, fortification brings that back up and brings it beyond what the yeast can do, thereby it ain't gonna ferment anymore. But let's figure out what our ABV is right now, because this is very important to know for fortification processes, okay? ABV to me is meaningless in the grand scheme of things, but I need to know what this is now so that when I fortify it, I exceed the yeast, like I just said. 12.15, so we have 128 parts or ounces at 12.15. That gives me 1,555.2. And then we added 32 ounces of nothing, divided by the grand total, which would be 128 plus 32, 32, 160. So divide that by 160. Now, the reason why we were able to get those numbers is because we had just wrapped this before so adding the pineapple juice. We measured it. To our fancy smudgy pitcher that has the measurements right on it. So exactly. That's what gave us those numbers. It's this is not one of those times to approximate, okay? Because you could create something that could still ferment if you don't fortify it enough. So that's the important aspect. So now we have 160 parts at 9.92. If my target is something like a 16 or 17 percent, we happen to have this overproofed rum. You want to grab that? Okay, warning, math ahead. <laughs> Just so you're aware. I, I played with some numbers a little bit just to see where I could go. We're shooting for about 18% on this. So I figured out I need 30 ounces of this rum. Now this is 63% rum. If we had 151, it'd be a little bit better, but you know, we found 63, so we went with it. We also chose a clear one. Derica chose a clear one. So that it shows the color of this better. Now, let me show you how I arrived at those numbers. All right, this is, this is one of those things that this is important just so that you surpass the yeast. Now I know 71B probably won't go past 15 or 16, but we had 17.55% with 71B. So I wanna surpass that to make sure that it won't keep going. So eight, it's like 18.09 or something is the ending result here. But let's, let's just figure this out. So we now have 128 ounces of mead plus 32 ounces of pineapple juice. That's 160 ounces, right? We already figured that out to 9.92%. So if I take 30 ounces of 63% 
rum. So 30 times 63, I get 1,890. If I add in 160 ounces times 9.92%, I get 3,477.2. Then I divide that by the total, which is 190. 160 plus 30 is 190. So divide that by 190 and I get 18.3. I was a little wrong. It's 18.3%. So let me take a note before I forget. Okay. So that's how you do that. That's the easiest way. And that way you can get it down to one ounce at a time. You can make this 20%, 19%. You can make this 18.6275% if you really, really want to. And if you have the precise measurements available to you to do so. I don't. So we're just going to go with 30 ounces. So just because I'm a crazy person, I sanitize the measuring cup. But this just is... Just before 60, adding 63% alcohol. alcohol. So was yeah. it necessary? Probably not. When you're fortifying... Go with something decent. I looked up reviews. I'm not a huge knower of rums. This one wasn't bad, okay? <laughs> the overproof rums at our disposal we don't have a are lot of choices. unfortunately limited. So uh, we wanted the overproof, and by overproof, I'm meaning a higher proof than your average rum. So that way we could use less of that yes. in relation to the volume of this. Right, think about it, 30, 30 ounces versus 190 total, it's only like one sixth of the total. If we had to use something that was say 40%, now we'd have to use significantly more and that could alter the flavor profile more than we really want to. Is this gonna alter the flavor a little bit? Well, yeah, of course it is. Now, this recipe came to me based on a cocktail that I had at a restaurant in our area. And so I believe rum was in that cocktail. So it seemed appropriate to add rum at this time. If we could find a high proof tequila. Don't get too close. Ooh, that wow. actually smells good though. Yeah. Um, a high proof tequila would, okay, I think. Can you just tilt this a little flavor bit? Flavor wise work well in this as well. That's, this is the first 16 ounces. And I just have to pour it. I can't, I can't even be sort of careful. But we're making this 18% alcohol here. I mean, not really that worried about too much happening. By the way, acetobacters actually require a higher pH too. So this is, this is too acidic. Acetobacter wouldn't work. Yeah. We're not getting vinegar. No. Off flavors are a worry, but it's, you know... Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do, you know? Don't let um, the fear of oxidation prevent you from making 18% alcohol. <laughs> so 16 and 14 is 30, last I checked. So here's our 14. Let's close this up. Wow, and I thought we weren't going to use all that. Yeah. More than half. Yeah. Do you need me to tilt it again? Yeah, it just seems to work better. I can go down the side a little. See, that oh, worked better. Experience, practice, you know? Also, if we had been using 40%, we might not have fit it all in here. <laughs> Jeez, I keep knocking off the side of the thing. I'm just going to give this a little mix. It smells like rum now. I'm okay with that. <laughs> all right, and now we take another taste. Now, for science! The thing about this is this wants to sit for a little while. Oh, yeah. You don't want to just bottle this right away. There's some sediment from the pineapple juice in here that we want to let settle out. And in general, you just want these flavors to meld together. Um, notice it's really no more hazy than it was before. It, it's about the same. All I smell is rum now. I didn't think we added that much, but maybe we did. Mm -mm. I think we might be smelling more in the rum because we have the open, this was rum coated. Brian's making happy. He, he has no poker face today. Mm. That is knock you on your butt, pineapple caps, Kamel. Oh, wow. That is good. So the cool thing about adding rum is rum is made from sugar cane. So it has an inherent sweetness in it, regardless of what proof it is. And I'm getting that little bit of sugar cane because it's kind of molassy. Yeah, kind of a little bit of molasses flavor coming through with the pineapple works really nice. With the honey, with the caps. Oh, this, this, is, this is awesome. This is really good. I'm, I'm quite happy about this. Wow. I, yay. So we need to let this sit for at least a week 
and we'll be back to give you another tasting on it. For now, we're just going to put the airlock back on it. It's going to sit on the shelf for fermentation. Now, you might be wondering why we're putting an airlock on it if it's not going to re-ferment. To make sure. <laughs> well, not I just only that. Absolute, we, no, no, no. The airlock is to make sure that it doesn't re-ferment. Yes, but also there's probably still some degassing going on. Oh, so yeah. we want to allow that to occur. Sure. But the rest of it, it's going to settle out. Some of that sediment's going to go so we can rack this again. That way we get a very clean product in the end. But so far, very impressed. So uh, we'll see you in uh, a week or two when we do the next step. Okay, so this has been sweetened. It's been fortified and it's been sitting for about two weeks. So we're just going to take the lid off. We're going to give this our taste, which is kind of our final taste, but it's really not because this is as finished as the beverage is going to get, but it hasn't been aged. So in a year is when you get the real tasting of this. It smells so good. And it is beautifully clear. Oh, wow. Look, look at that. Oh, I'm so excited. It's oh, gorgeous. Yeah, there's some sediment in the bottom and that comes from the pineapple juice um, bits settling out. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, that is beautiful. That's a nine and a half to a 10 on clarity. <laughs> I am I'm just so happy right now. I hope that the flavor doesn't let me down because everything about this, the 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 definitely getting the rum coming through, a little visual, bit of spiciness. The aroma, it's all where I want it to be. My heart is going fast. <laughs> I kind of have a cooked pineapple taste or a smell. Mm, I'm going in. Okay. Holy crap. Wow. Okay, first off, this is 18.3%, if you recall. This will knock you on your butt. It's got some kick. But you will be happy. It's got a good sweetness level. The fruit comes through a little bit. And it's um, got a punch. Definitely has the capsaicin kick. This is one of those, like, I, I've said this about capsaicin or capsicamels before, that they can be like a whiskey alternative for me because they have that same kind of knock you in the face. Like, okay. It's almost impossible to drink whiskey without making this face. Just a little bit. <laughs> Everybody does it. It's involuntary. You can't help it. The, the it's whi just the whiskey cringe. It's the whiskey cringe. Yeah. <laughs> this gives you the whiskey cringe. It does. <laughs> All right. So when we went to the restaurant and I had the ring of fire, did you taste any of that? This was, this was years ago. So. Sure. I remember that. I have absolutely no idea. I so, think I did taste it. My concept of this. Was, oh, wait. You was, had it at the place that's on forced... Yes, I did try that. On 4th? No, this is in Tampa. This then, is nope. this is the Native American themed restaurant. Oh, oh yeah. Nope, don't remember that. Um, anyway, they have a, a drink there called the Ring of Fire, and it is a pineapple jalapeno, I think it was, or I don't remember what the spice was. It's a cocktail. It was a cocktail. And it was wonderful. And it had the sweetness and it had the fruitiness and it had the spiciness and it was a perfect balance and it had all those things going for it and it was just lovely and it was experienced and it was fantastic. And I'm like, oh, Capscamel, if we can make a Capscamel and we can put pineapple and maybe it'll be like that. And whoa, we have succeeded, ladies and gentlemen. This, so that, is, this is what awesome. your ring of fire tasted like? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Guess I did good since I didn't even know what that tasted like. Here, you need more. And fortifying this with rum was it took it to another level. A hundred percent the right direction to go because it is just working so wonderfully with the pineapple and the caps come out. Mm -hmm. And it's a high proof rum. It was sixty three percent rum. I'm not. It, it's not saying, "Hey, I'm a rum cocktail." No, no, no I don't really taste rum uh -uh. as much as. The rum makes me think the cooked pineapple. Yeah. That's what I'm getting because yeah. of that caramely from the sugar. Right. Caramely flavor added to the pineapple really makes me think like pineapple upside down cake. Yes. With um, habaneros in it. <laughs> it's actually really good. Okay. For those of you who are fans of mac and cheese, raise your hand. Right? Okay. Now, if you've never experienced this before, I want you to make... A ooey gooey plate of mac and cheese, and I want you to bake some jalapenos in there. Mm -hmm. 
Not too many, though. Not too many. <laughs> and not ours from the garden. Because <laughs> you'll still eat it, but you'll be in pain later. Mm. Um, and during. <laughs> and during. And I won't continue with that conversation because you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I learned that <clears throat> from a place when I lived in Connecticut. They called it, not your mama's mac and cheese. And it's fantastic. So just, just do it. But this is reminding me of that decadent, rich, ooey gooey, of course, obviously it's not cheese, sensation, then with that additional punch, grab you and shake you around, capsicumel yep. addition, and it, it's just wonderful. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. It's, I don't have all the words to say how pleased I am with this beverage. I'm so happy right now. Good. And it's not the room talking, people. No. She hasn't had anything yet. The journey with this one is kind of interesting because from the, the beginning, the smell is that cooked pineapple, like pineapple upside down cake. A little sweet, a little tangy, definitely a little chilly in the smell even. And then as you take a sip. The very first sensation I get is honey. Yep. And not just the flavor, but the sensation of I'm drinking some honey. It's got a nice coating. Honey and caramel pineapple. Yeah. That's what I get, like that, and then it that just brown sugar things. pineapple thing. Then you get a little bit of the kick of the capsaicin coming in. And as it goes into the mid-mouth, now it fills your palate. This is very rich, very thick and viscous. Again, without being cloying. It's sweet, but it doesn't come across as sweet. This is certainly not a uh, kind and gentle beverage, okay? This enters your mouth and you get that sweetness and you get a little bit more of the pineapple and the brown sugar and the, the caramel type of thing and the honey and it's all mixed together. And then your tongue starts to tingle and your cheeks start to tingle. And you become and a dragon. You, you get a little bit of that capsaicin hit and uh, wow, that just mixes so well together. The finish is actually super long. Mm -hmm. It's with, this one stays with you. I'm still exhaling a minute later after talking and I'm still, it's still coming there. And it's fruity, florally with the heat. Like it's the dragon thing. You definitely get dragon breath from this one. Really amazing. I'm just so happy. I'm, I. This is this is totally spicy pineapple upside down cake though. Absolutely. That, that, that's Absolutely. precisely what this tastes like. Um, yeah, I I don't I don't think we could have made this come out any better. We both had an idea in our head. In, coincidentally, they were the same idea, but not for the same <laughs> same reason. <laughs> I just wanted to make a sweet <clears throat> pineapple. Habanero, she actually had um, other ideas, and I apparently don't remember that. I have to look up that drink now to see, yeah, see what's what the it. cocktail, like maybe it is rum cocktail. It would make it sense. It might be rum. rum yeah, could be rum, pineapple, and um, chili. I have to remember what the name of the place is. It's a, it's an it's, Indian it's princess's an Indian name. name. What is her name? I don't remember. I can see her face. I know we went with Savvy and Ben. Yep. It was a while ago. It was like <laughs> six years, seven years? It's been a while. Yeah. Anyway, so we have to put a number on this. Mm. Our numbering system goes one through 10 with the occasional 11. Only 42. if it's amazing. 42 is gonna be a little bit out of range. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Below a one, we might tell you about it, but you won't see us drink it because that's probably not good to drink. It's probably toxic. So we would have dumped that out, but we'd have told you about it. That's right. <laughs> um, one through 10 is varying levels of ew to ick. Um, a one might not be toxic. You said but one through 10 is varying levels of ew to ick. Ew to aw, or yeah, <laughs> whatever. One through 10 is varying levels of ew to yay, or amazing. Um, one might not be dangerous to drink, but you still might not want to. 10 is probably the one that you have in mind before you even open the cabinet. That's the one you're going for. And 11 is just when the stars align and you get something that's way better than that. This, if someone handed this to me and did not warn me ahead of time, it would be difficult to enjoy this as is without knowing what this was. That's how aggressive this oh, is. Oh, sure. If you if you were Just handed hand this, and like, oh, here is a nice, and you're like, Whoa. but if somebody said, here's a lovely capsicum out, something different. Especially since you don't really get the spice oh. until you're already fully involved. Like <clears throat> you have committed you, you to this. You are dedicated to this beverage and then and it's like halfway through, you get hit with it. 
Now, is this super, super spicy? No, not yeah. really. But it's got enough that it'll catch you off guard if you're not ready for it. So yeah, yeah. keep that in mind. I know somebody's gonna use like some crazy scorpion pepper or something else and make this. Go for it. For us, this is good. This has a great flavor combo. I would not want to use something hotter because it'll just overtake it and it just becomes a hot meat. And if that's what you want, yeah. leave the pineapple out. Right, yeah. This has got such a, an incredible balance of all the different flavors right. and they're playing together and they're working off each other so well that I wouldn't want to right. change the chili in this. Now okay? that said, if that is what you like and that's how you want to make it, I will not tell you you're wrong. I just won't ask for any. It's just going to be different than what we made. Yeah, it'll just be different. But anyway, I think I need another sample before I put another one in this. I already know where you're going. <laughs> I had no it's poker gonna be, face. It's going to be one of two. No I'm not poker sure which face. one yet. And yes, I do speak in random weird voices throughout the day and occasionally sing my own creation of songs. To the song, as it's on the radio, yeah. about things that are going on right now. Like washing dishes. Yep. Or scooping cat litter. Yep. So please feel free for, feel sorry for Brian that yep. that's his existence. <laughs> Sometimes it gets a little much. So yesterday you told me it was cute, so. Occasionally it's horrible. <laughs> Sometimes it's just like, okay, can you please not that? sing every single thing that you're doing in the kitchen right now? But anyway, back to this. As I'm drinking more of it, I'm getting more of an appreciation for it. I have a feeling Derek likes this more than I do. I'm not saying I dislike it. I like it a lot. I just think Derica likes it even more than I do. I love that this is a capsicamel. I would not appreciate this as much if it was a wine-based version. And in other yeah, words, if you took the honey out, thin. I would not be enjoying this the, nearly the as much. The honey adds an extra dimension and a, a richness and a thickness yes. to things. It, yes. Not just in a physical sense. It adds extra flavors that give more body. Yeah. Um, that really makes this unique and very complex, very deep. There's lots of layers to it. Um, it it's a fantastic mead, okay? This is a phenomenally good mead. Do you have a number? Of course I do. All right. As soon as you swallow. One, two, three, nine point five. Okay, why'd you go to 11? Because it's awesome! Okay, I agree. This is really, really good. There is nothing, absolutely, positively, without hesitation, nothing that I want to change about this. I want more pineapple. And every expectation that I had for my concept, my mental concept, has come to fruition in this particular beverage, in this particular container okay. right here. And I'm so happy, not only because we met that expectation that I had, but then I didn't think we were going to meet that expectation that I had. I honestly thought, hmm. okay, a random memory from six years ago or whatever of a cocktail certainly can't be homebrewed, could it? Yes, yes I can. Okay, I went 9.5. I was verging on a 10. My only problem is, if this is a pineapple habanero, I want more pineapple. I'm not tasting enough of the pineapple. It's there, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of like 75% habanero, eh, no, not even. It's like 50% habanero, 30% honey, 20% pineapple. I'm just not getting enough pineapple to really meld it all together. I, for me personally, and I know that it's gonna be- Everybody has their own it's taste. It's all objective, all of the tastings. Subjective. Subjective, thank you. Um, so even when we give you our tasting notes, it's based on our preferences and our experiences, mm -hmm. which are going to be vastly different from yours. So please take that into consideration when we give you our tasting notes. Absolutely. Um, and but to me... Depending on the day, they could be different. Right. Tomorrow, I she could... She might think it's a 12. Yeah, I could be like, what? I why, might think it's a why, 10. Why did I like this so much? You know, maybe drinking coffee right before this would, mm -hmm. would ruin it, which I don't want to think about that because I'm so happy with this right now. But to me, I'm getting plenty of pineapple. And mm -hmm. pineapple can be kind of in your face. And habanero can be kind of in your face. So right now, 
to me, I'm getting all of the flavors that I want to get okay. out of this. And so that's why I went higher than Brian. Well, I'm glad you're getting that because this was really your idea, your suggestion. Um, for me, it's a nine and a half, which means you better believe I'm gonna drink it. I mean, I, I can totally see putting this on the rocks and drinking it like I would whiskey at night. Yeah. It's mine. Yeah, right. Well, half of it's gonna go away for a year and two years. So you only get like a bottle and a half to drink right now, so. Well, actually. And your side's the mean side, so it's gonna go on your side. That's right. That she can totally get to as well. <laughs> it's just right there. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, we're, I'm, don't, don't take anything as I don't like this. What did way. you give it? 9.5. Yeah, no, that's. I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> this is incredibly good. Like I say, to push it over the top, if it had a little bit more pineapple flavor, I was tempted to take the extract out and put some into a glass just to see. Well, you can serve it the way they serve from right. fire. They put, actually, they don't serve it in a little dainty glass. They put it in a nice big glass and they set a, a pineapple ring on the lip of the glass. Oh, there you go. I would personally probably want a little bit more like pineapple just squeezed into it on serving, and I'd be totally fine with it. It's 18%. You can dilute it a little bit, and it'll still be amazingly powerful. So, yeah, go ahead and make this unequivocally, no reservations. We went with just the quart of pineapple because it's easy and simple, um, but yeah, this this worked, okay? This was awesome, and uh, do you have anything else left to say? Make this, enjoy it. Share it with your friends if you like your friends. If you don't like your friends, then don't share it with them. They're not worthy. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.